Hi, I'm Chris Allen, Program Specialist for the Hancock Park District, and welcome to our Nature's Virtual Classroom. Today we're talking about Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera means winged with scales. Uh, there are two insects that have the wings with scales. That is the butterfly and the moth. Today we're going to talk about the moth. And in the world, there's actually 160,000 species. And here in the United States, North America, there is 11,000. Here in Ohio, I have photographed several different species, and so we're going to talk about those today. How do we tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Well, when you look at the moth, the moth has feathery antennas. He has a very fuzzy body. He flies mostly at night, although there is the clear-wing hummingbird moth that flies during the day. And of course, she does some pollination, but most moths, they're a food source for the songbird. Out of all the eggs that the moth might lay, the majority of those little caterpillars are food for the songbird. Now, a lot of caterpillars uh, in the moth do not even have a mouth to eat with. Their main job is to mate, lay eggs, provide food for the songbird, and pass away. Isabella moth is one of my favorite moths. She's very pretty and she's very elegant looking. And she comes from the most famous caterpillar. Your parents are always talking about the fact that woolly bear can predict the weather. Now, this is not really true. Woolly bear, his colors are determined by his age. If there's more black, he's younger. If there's more of the brown, he's older. And Wooly Bear hibernates. He hibernates under the leaf litter, like my little friend here that's getting ready to wake up in the spring. He'll wake up in the spring, he'll eat a lot of grass, and after he's eaten enough of the grass, he will then make his cocoon and he'll stay in his cocoon for sometimes about 30 days and then he hatches and a lot of the time Isabella will lay her eggs under the bark of a uh, tree and that's where the cocoon will stay until it hatches. Now we've looked at my favorite moth. Let's take a look at some of the others that you might find when you're out. This is the pink polythemus. And you can see how beautiful she is, and you can see her eye spots. Those eye spots are not true eyes. They are something that keeps the predator away from her because they think that it's a bigger insect than it actually is. So we also have a common polythemus. And the common polythemus is a little bit smaller, has the same eye spots, but the eye spots are very, very bright. They truly look like an eye. So if you were a bird, you would definitely stay away from the common polythemus. There's also the sphinx moths. There's a variety of sphinx moths, and uh, some of them are camouflaged in different colors, and they're just beautiful to find, of course, at night, because these are nocturnal. And there are things that you can do to attract the uh, moths at night so that you can find them. But the rarest of the moths that you're going to find is the Cecropia. And this is a nice specimen because you can see its very fuzzy body and you can see its feathery antenna. And it has the eye spots on both the hind wing and the forewing. So that makes it a little bit different from the polythemus. One of the most common moths that you're gonna find if you're out in the parks is Luna Moth. And there's some great storybooks with Luna Moth in it. But it's very distinct because it has a, a very long, thin uh, hind wing, and it's always a beautiful green. And you notice the feathery antenna once again. So that is some of the uh, 
moths that you will see. Uh, you might also see a hummingbird moth, and it's called a clear wing. And that clear wing hummingbird moth, uh, she flies during the day, where most of your moths are nocturnal, and they fly at night. The hummingbird clear wing moth flies during the day, and she nectars. Now let's talk about the baby moth. Some people like to call it larva. I like to refer to it as a caterpillar or a baby moth. Now, this is my baby caterpillar. And you can see that he has a little head with tentacles for helping him feel his way around. He has eyes for seeing. He has a mandible for chewing and biting. Look how sharp that is. Ooh, I might want, not want to leave my finger there very long. This is his head, and he has little tentacles for feeling around. He also, how do you breathe? Through your nose or through your mouth? Well, baby caterpillar breathes through his spiracles, and they're all along the side of the lower part of his body. He has a thorax, and he has an abdomen, and his heart is actually located in his abdomen. Now to walk around, while he's a caterpillar, he has what's called prolegs. Those prolegs grasp onto things like little clamps, and they help him to walk around. But as he grows, he also uses his true legs, and his true legs are what will still be there when he comes out of the cocoon. He will have lost the prolegs, but he will still have his true legs and he's out of the cocoon, and he can fly off and enjoy life. How can you help the moth to survive? Well, first of all, you can go read a few books about moths and find out their importance. Like, remember, the little bitty baby caterpillar is food for the songbird. There's a lot of caterpillars that you don't want to play with. Now, you can play with woolly bear, all you want because he's soft and he's fuzzy and he does not have these sharp little spikes. Now you can see tussock moth, he has spikes that are uh, sticking out there. You don't want to play with him. And then you have the diagger moth. Looks so fluffy and so soft like a nice little puppy dog, but just see those little daggers? Those will sting you and make you extremely sick. So when you're out there enjoying nature and finding caterpillars, take their picture, but don't necessarily play with them.